This video will contain a lot of spoilers for Attack on Titan. Please don't watch this video if you don't want to get spoiled. Um, and this will probably spoil all the way up to uh, the final episode or the final season uh, of the anime that's coming out right now, so season four. If you haven't watched season four, um, or if you haven't watched uh, any of the previous seasons, and if you don't want to get spoiled, <laughs> please click away right now. Uh, but if you're okay getting spoiled, or if you've read or watched, uh, so if you read the manga, or if you've uh, watched the anime all the way up to you know, the end of season four, then here we go. This video is going to be, <laughs> is going to go through just a quick uh, calculation of how destructive the rumbling will be if it happened in real life. So, first, <clears throat> this just kind of goes through like the, uh, the rough idea of what we're going to be doing, uh, how we're going to figure this out. So, we want to calculate the force of how much one colossal titan uh, can produce. Then we want to scale that to the force of, uh, of one wall titan. Because right, the Colossal Titan is a little bit bigger than a Wall Titan. Uh, and then we have to, of course, multiply by how many Wall Titans there are uh, to get the total, the sum total of how destructive the rumbling will be. So, first, <clears throat> uh, these are just some quick calculations. <clears throat> So this is the video, or this is the shot from the first season. It's uh, uh, when the uh, Colossal Titan broke through uh, Wall, Wall Roses, I, I believe. No, Wall uh, Maria, Wall Maria, the very uh, outside wall. Um, <clears throat> and I took the screenshot because I wanted to see how big the hole is. Um, I wanted to see how how big the wall or how big the hole is that the colossal titan kicked through, and I'll just make sure to highlight that in like uh, orange. Give it a few seconds. <laughs> um, right there, that section right there. <clears throat> so we know that the wall is fifty meters. And we know that the Colossal Titan is 60 meters. Uh, so given those approximate values, um, we can kind of see that the height, the height of this wall, the height of the hole that's in the wall is about 18.9 meters. And the length of this hole is about 13.9 meters. And so if you want to figure out the area Right, the area of the hole. You know, we just use a basic uh, <clears throat> integration. So I'm just solving for uh, <clears throat> first. We need like an equation, right? We need an equation for how this parabola looks like. So we know it's going to be. Uh, we know that the length is 13.9 meters, right? So um, if we set the middle. Right, if we set the middle part of the parabola to be at x equals 0, right, then it's going to go from negative 6.95 to positive 6.95. Right? If you add them together, it's going to add up to 13.9 meters in total. Right? Uh, you know, so we're just splitting this parabola in half, right? halfway um, down the middle. And all we have to do is <clears throat> you know, we just have to solve for um, the equation of a parabola, right? y equals ax squared plus b. And uh, we know when x, uh, because we set y to be equal to 18.9 when x is equal to 0, right? When x is equal to 0, it's at the middle. And then when it's at the middle, it's at its highest point, right? The parabola is at its highest point. And we know the height is 18.9 meters, right, from the previous picture. So we know b is equal to 18.9, and then all we have to do is then solve for a, um, just using one of the other points, right? That's, uh, 
in this case, I just set it equal, uh, set y uh, is equal to 0, and x is equal to 6.95. It doesn't really matter. You can set it equal to 6.95 or negative 6.95. You, you come up with the same answer. Uh, but in the end, you get negative 0.39 is equal to 8, right? So then we just take the integral of that function, right? <clears throat> so the function of the parabola is going to be equal to y is equal to negative 0.39 x squared plus 18.9. Take the integral from negative 6.95 to 6.95, right, uh, between those two bounds. Uh, and at the end, we end up with about 175 meters squared, right? So that's the area under the curve. Uh, so that's how big, uh, that's the surface area of the hole that the colossal Titan made. Now, uh, we can use two methods to figure out how much force the colossal Titan uh, exerted on the wall. We can either use uh, real world uh, material equivalents. So we can uh, look up the tensile strength uh, of different materials that would make up a wall. So rock, right? Uh, different tensile strength of different rocks like limestone or marble or things like that. Or we can use, um, we can use the videos of uh, the hook shots <coughs> being shot at the wall to see how much uh, force one hook, hook shot would have and then uh, multiply that by the surface area. Now, so for the first method, right, for the first method, uh, we already have numbers for the tensile strength of different rocks. So limestone, um, <coughs> has a tensile, tensile strength of about 18 megapascal. And that's about, um, <clears throat> uh, a megapascal is just a million pascal, and a pascal is just newtons per meter squared, right? So it's just a uh, unit for pressure. You just take the force and divide it by uh, the surface area, right? Um, and then if we multiply it by the area that we got earlier, right, 175-ish, uh, squared meters, and then we get you know, about if the wall was made out of limestone, you know, the colossal titan used about 3,000 million newtons of force, so about 3 billion newtons of force. Uh, if it was sand, if, it, if the wall was made out of sandstone, right, which is 66 megapascal, uh, the colossal titan used about 11,000 million newtons, so about 11 billion newtons. <clears throat> and uh, there is some like compressive forces going on too, uh, but usually compression is more like crushing, and the Colossal Titan wasn't really crushing the rock. The Colossal Titan was more uh, kicking the rock, right, which is like tearing it apart, right, it's usually tearing it apart. Um, it's not perfect, it's not a perfect calculation, but it'll do. <clears throat> now, uh, we want to calculate the force using the second method. So, um, we know that kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and we're just going to use the average velocity, uh, you know, without air friction or anything like that, just to make it a little bit easier. And then, so first we want to find out the uh, velocity, right? The velocity of the, uh, the hook shot. So this this took uh, quite quite a long time to um, figure out. I had to go through uh, like a video frame by frame to see where, you know, about roughly how fast the hook shot was going. <clears throat>
And in this case, uh, we have a video of Mikasa from uh, Season 2. <laughs> it's kind of hard to show the video because well, I, I don't have it and it's really hard. To, it's, it's really tricky to even go through it frame by frame, but uh, in this video, basically, um, she went for one, one section of this wall. So these uh, big, uh, <clears throat> so all these big long pillars that go up and down. She went down, she went from one pillar to another pillar of the wall. So one section of the wall to another section um, in about four frames, give or take. <clears throat> you know, it's kind of hard to say because the lines are a little bit uh, blurry. But Using that, uh, we have kind of like a rough estimate of how fast the hookshot was going. And same with this video, but this video, uh, it's like it's in the same episode, but she's going from the top, the top of the wall to the bottom of the wall, close to the bottom of the wall, and that took her about six frames per uh, six frames. Uh, for, sorry, for the hookshot to go from the top to the bottom of the wall. Um, <clears throat> and if, if we use the picture that we have, we had previously, this is kind of like the rough estimate of how fast the hook shot went. Um, so the first one, the first one, it took her about four frames to go uh, 15 meters, roughly. The orange line, uh, she went from the right side to the left side. So it took her about, uh, she went, or, or the hook shot, sorry, the hook shot went about 90 meters per second. And the second uh, frame, or the second scene, it took her, it took the hook shot six frames to go about 33 meters. No, since it's 24 frames per second, right? The animation cycle, uh, the uh, frames per second, it's 24 frames per second. So that's how I calculated how long it took, roughly. <laughs> Meaning, um, for the second one, it took her about 130, uh, the hook shot went about 133 meters per second. I just averaged those two together and got about 111 meters per second. That's how fast the hook shot was traveling, no, give or take. And then we just need two more things, right? We just need the cross section of the hook shot, and we need the mass, right? How much it weighs. So I kind of just had to guess, because <laughs> there aren't really any uh, super duper accurate um, reference material for those either. <laughs> so for the uh, cross section, just that it was about like 0.5 centimeters. Uh, the tip, right? We're looking at the tip of the hook shot probably about 0.5 centimeters uh, radius, right? And then, of course, pi r squared, so the cross-section, the area would be like 0. 0.00008 meters squared. Makes sense. It's going to be really small. And then the mass of the hook shot just said it was about half a kilogram. Um, if it was any lighter, right, so that's about a pound, half a kilogram. Um, if it was any lighter, just in my mind, uh, I feel like it wouldn't stick into the wall because it'd be too light. If it was too heavy, though, a little bit too heavy, um, you know, it'd be cumbersome. You know, it wouldn't really be, it wouldn't be able to uh, accelerate as fast. So I thought half a kilogram should be about roughly uh, a good estimate. So now we just plug everything in, right? You know, one half times 0.5 times one. 111 squared, and we get about 3,000 newtons of force, right, for that small cross section, right, for the area of 0.0008 meters squared, right, for that small area, we get about uh, 3,000 newtons of force. Um, <clears throat> and then for the uh, 
big area, right? So if we scale that up to how uh, to the size of the hole that the colossal titan made, right, 175 meters squared, we get about six billion newtons of force, six seven billion newtons of force, and that's actually really close. <laughs> if we go back to the previous slide, right, we got about three billion and eleven billion newtons of force, right? So six billion, that's right in between, which is actually really amazing that, it, <laughs> that the numbers ended up working. Right? This happens a lot in uh, science. This isn't really science, but um, it's an awesome feeling when uh, you do two independent methods of calculation, right? And they both end up you know, getting roughly the same answer, right? So, you know, this is just a really, really neat uh, answer that came out. So now we know that, we know how many, uh, roughly how many <clears throat> newtons of force that the colossal titan exerted. No. So now we just have to scale it down to the the uh, strength of a wall titan. Colossal titan, 60 meters tall, right? We need to scale it down to a 50 meter tall titan, and then we just use dimensional analysis, right? Um, height is one dimensional, right? It, it's only uh, one. Uh, we're only taking one measurement, right? But strength usually. Well, in animals, it's correlated with uh, cross-section, which is two-dimensional, right, because it's the area. Um, and the, re the reason for that is very complicated, right, biomechanics and muscles. Uh, it's not, no, not an exact correlation. But um, now usually the strength of the muscle comes from how big the muscle is, right, usually. And, of course, the size of the muscle is based on, well, how how big the cross section of the muscle is, right? So that's why you can sort of uh, sort of uh, assume you know, strength is uh, correlated with the square right, of the height. You know, so if you double the height, you get quadruple the strength, roughly, right? Roughly. <clears throat> So we know the average strength of a 60 meter Titan, that's about 7,000 million or 7 billion Newtons. And that's from averaging, by right? averaging everything, uh, all the numbers we had previously, you know, we get about 7,000 Newtons, seven, sorry, 7, uh, 7 billion, 7 billion Newtons. Um, and then if we just scale it to the uh, 50 meter tall Titan, no, so we just do 50 divided by 60, right, and then we square it, right? We square it to get the uh, strength instead of the height. And multiply it by 7,000, we get about 5,000, 5, 000, 5 uh, sorry, 5 billion newtons of force. That's how, that's the average kicking strength of a 50 meter, meter Titan. We're almost there. So before that, uh, <clears throat> before we can get how many, uh, how destructive the rumbling would be, right? We have to multiply. So we have 5,000, 5 billion, 5 billion newtons per titan. Now we need to multiply that by the number of titans, right? Uh, and then to go back to a previous video, I calculated how many titans would be at the wall, but I actually, I'll be updating the numbers. So instead of going shoulder to shoulder, right, instead of lining up shoulder to shoulder, you know, the Titans will be lining up front to back, right, like a centipede. <laughs> so front to back, front to back, front to back, right, like uh, standing in a line, right, in a queue. <clears throat> so we know the total wall perimeter, that's from the previous episode, 6,000, 7,000 kilometers, and then the Titan body width. Right, so front the, the, from the chest uh, to the back, right? And that's roughly six meters, right? Titans could be more, uh, more no, they could be bigger, they could be smaller, but roughly it's going to be six meters. Um, 
So that's going to be about a million, a million and 161,000 titans in the wall from front to back, right, standing in a line, versus the 410,000 um, from last video. Okay, now we're almost there. Uh, so the kicking strength of one wall titan, right, 50 meter titan, is about 5 billion newtons, 5,000 mega newtons. There's a million titans, so combined force is about 5.8 times 10 to the 15 newtons of force. <clears throat> right, but then since they're rumbling, <laughs> That they won't just be kicking, right? They won't just be kicking, they'll be walking around. Um, so the average walking speed for a per human is about is about three to four miles per hour. Um, yeah. And I just assumed that it was I just assumed you know, if we scale the people up to the size of titans, it'd be about the same, right? Proportionally, right? How tall you are is how fast you can walk, right? It, it'd be the same, it'd be linear, right? The ratio would be linear. Um, and that would make sense, right? Because your legs also get um, roughly the same length bigger, right? The same ratio bigger. You know, so I said the average walking speed for a wall titan is about 133 miles per hour, you know, about 60 meters per second. And then now all you have to do to figure out the power, it's just multiply force times velocity, right? We have the force, right? 5 times 10 to the 15 newtons of force multiplied by velocity, right? How fast they can go you know, on average. And we get about 3.4 times 10 to the 17 watts of power, uh, which is a lot. <clears throat> so, you know, to make a comparison, right? The rumbling produces about 82.4 megatons of energy per second, <laughs> which is kind of insane. <laughs> <clears throat> to put on, put that into comparison, uh, you know, the largest bomb ever created, Sar Bomba, it was uh, theoretically supposed to yield 100 megatons, uh, but the one that was dropped was 50 megatons. Uh, so one second of the rumbling is more energetic than the Tsar Bomba. <laughs> Hurricanes produce about 6 times 10 to the 14 joules per second, um, you know, which means one day of a hurricane produces about the same amount of energy as one second of a rumbling, which is crazy. A magnitude 9 earthquake produces about 500 megatons of energy, you know, give or take. <clears throat> which is about like, uh, how many seconds? That's about six or seven seconds of the rumbling. <laughs> and then if we look at volcano energies, uh, the volcanoes that explode one in a thousand years, sorry, one in uh, 10,000 and one in 100,000 years, the BEI-8 volcanoes like Yellowstone or Toba, they produce like a couple thousand megatons of energy, um, which is still only like a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes of the rumbling. <laughs> so, you know, compare compared to all these natural disasters, right? some of them almost uh, ended civilization, like the Toba, Toba supervolcano. Um, so yeah, <laughs> the rumbling would, yeah, like on the bottom, it, it, like it says, uh, the rumbling would basically wipe out human civilization. <laughs> yeah, no wonder why everyone's so... Uh, <laughs> Fearful about it. And then just a final kind of for fun calculation, how much energy does the colossal titan produce uh, when it nukes, right? When it goes you know, nuclear. So we have the uh, Taylor von Neumann set all the equation for blast wave. Um, 
this is the uh, determinant form, I believe. Um, we just need the uh, so we all the variables. What we need are we need we want to find out energy, right? Energy yield. So we need air density. Uh, we need the uh, constant uh, alpha, or sometimes it's called beta. We need the radius of the uh, blast, right? The thermonuclear blast, and then we need how much time elapsed since uh, since initial detonation. So we know the air uh, just uh, for air density and the uh, constant uh, a alpha. Um, I'm just plugging in numbers from Wikipedia. <laughs> the, you know, the, this is just like an average number. Um, and it's at about sea level, like 1.225 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. The that density is about uh, the average density of air at sea level, right? Which which is close to where um, the world of Attack on Titan takes place, hopefully. <laughs> uh, and then now all we need are radius and time. Right? So we have the constants, we just need radius and time. And so this is a screenshot that I took from uh, at season three uh, when they were taking back uh, Shiganshina. So the time, this one's hard, uh, but it, it was a, uh, roughly two seconds after the explosion, one or two seconds after the explosion. And the radius, the radius is uh, pretty tricky to figure out. Uh, but if I look at the bottom of this blast, no, I kind of see a couple houses. Um, and if I look at all the houses, uh, I just kind of estimated it's probably you know, maybe six houses across, maybe a little bit more. Maybe it's between six to ten house houses across. Um, and then each house is, it would take about 10 to like 15 meters. So, no. The radius would be anywhere from 80 to 120 meters, somewhere around that ballpark. And now all we have to do is just plug in all the numbers. And we get about 800 million joules of energy, 851,910,000 joules of energy, which is seems like a lot and it is a lot but uh that's not even one megaton of uh, of energy when we look at the when we go back to the previous calculation right a megaton is about four times 10 to the 15 <laughs> joules of energy so this uh, from this equation we get that it's probably only about like uh one one million of a meg, so about a ton, one ton of uh, TNT, right? If it's a millionth, it's going to be about a millionth of a megaton, so it's about one ton of TNT, which is still a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, that's about the energy explosion. The energy is about one one ton of TNT. So it's a mini nuke. <laughs> so yeah, that's <clears throat> so that's pretty much all the uh, how destructive the rumbling would be if it happened in real life.